Are you still scared and confused on how to start your own food business? Because in this video, I'm gonna be debunking three different myths that's really stopping people from actually taking that plunge. Going out there, create something that they enjoy. So if that's you, make sure you guys keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a thriving small business and a profitable food business. If you would like to support us, if you get any value from these videos that I'm creating for you, then make sure you guys go ahead and what do you do? You smash that like button because that shows us that you support the video. That shows the YouTube algorithm that this is something you enjoy. So then that way we can share it with even more people all you have to do is to hit that like button. Every single day I have emails that are asking me, Wilson, you know what, how do I start a cookie business? How do I start an ice cream business, a food truck, a cloud kitchen, a whatever food business? But I just don't know how to start. And when I ask them, I'm like, hey, you know what, have you watched my hundreds of videos where I share with you guys how to start? And they all say, yes, I have. But still, they're scared. Still, they do not know how to go about. So when I actually finally dove deeper into what's really stopping these aspiring food owners to actually take action, create something that they're passionate about, I find that there are three common myths that are stopping them, that are holding them back. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you debunking these myths. So then that way you too can go out there and create your own food business. So let's dive right in. First myth is that you're not gonna have any work-life balance. Guys, I hate this myth. I hate the hustle, hustle, hustle mentality. I truly hate it. Having said that, I do not mean do not work hard. I always believe in working hard and I myself fell for the trap of just hustle, 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 hustle. Quick story with you. First year I was dating my girlfriend and I brought her out for Christmas dinner. It was at this hot stone grilled beef place. And because I was work, 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 work all the time, even on Christmas dinner, I was still working. Food came, arrived, I went outside, took a call, came back in and I was pissed off. I was pissed off because my steak was well done. And my girlfriend at that time, she told me, Wilson, you were gone for 30 minutes. Of course your steak was well done. That's when something really hit me that I can't even spend the time with my girlfriend on Christmas day because I had to work. And at that time, I truly believed that working more hours would equate to more success because I really bought into that myth. I really thought that more hours, more hard work, more success. But that is truly not what is happening in today's world because of technology, because of access of information. Now, having said that, doesn't mean you don't put in the extra hours. To begin with, yes, you're gonna put in more hours. It's gonna be less work-life balance because you're building this engine that is gonna be running your business for you. However, as you continue to build your business, build the right systems and process and having standard operating procedures, stuff that people can follow. When you start building a team that you can delegate tasks to, a team that you trust, a team that can handle your work for you. It allows you to actually free up yourself from being working in the business to being able to work on the business, work on the engine that's gonna run without you. That really truly is the key for you to be able to operate a business. We need to start believing that the business will work on our behalf. We need to believe that the business itself would take care of itself with the proper systems, with the proper people. That's what we're trying to do, is to build this automatic engine, build this business, not be working in the business. And with this little shift in mindset, this is what allowed me to gain back my weekends. This is what allowed me to spend so much time traveling with my friends, my family, my spouse, and actually spend time with my little daughter, is when I had this mindset shift to understand that, you know what? I don't need to work 80 hours a week. I just need to focus and work smart. And if you don't know how to create the processes, the systems, so then that way you can avoid working 80 hour weeks, the nightmares that you hear about all the time, then I invite you guys to join Foodiepreneurs 
Finest. This is a mentorship program that I've created based upon my years of experience building seven different locations, building different home-based food businesses. So then that way you can learn from it. I share with you the tactics, not only that, but also the step-by-step -step process on building an automatic business. So then that way you can buy back your time, buy back your time to spend it with people you love while creating a food business that you are gonna be proud of. Now, if you're scared to take that plunge, it is completely fine. I give you a free preview of the stuff that we're teaching you in the free masterclass down below. This is where you can have a glimpse of the framework that I'm gonna be sharing with you. So definitely, if you're serious about building a food business, a food business that you don't need to hustle your butt off with, working 80 hours a week, then you know what, definitely, Join me in the free masterclass down below to see if this is right for you. Now to have work-life balance, aside from having the processes and the systems in place, you also must have your intent. Declare your intent out there and have that separation and commit to that. What do I mean by that? For me, I get off every single day sharp at six. And the reason is because I wanna spend time with my wife, I wanna spend time with my daughter, I wanna go pick her up, I wanna hang out with her, I wanna go on slides with her, go out there and bike around, enjoy the sunshine. That's the intent I set out and that is something that I'm committing to, regardless of how busy my day is. And what does that push me? It pushes me to be more productive during my work days because I know that I need to get off by six to pick up my daughter and I have that obligation for my family. So. What does that mean? That means I need to have people I trust, that people can actually hold me accountable to the work that I do. People can hold themselves accountable to actually build the business together with me as well. My wife keeps me accountable for my nighttime job, being a dad, being a husband, whereas during my work times, Jason holds me accountable to shoot these videos. Brian holds me accountable to running the ice cream shops. That's how we can have work and life balance. Bottom line, guys, is that you have the control over how you use your time. Whether it's 80 hours a week, you being burnt out, you having the excuse, working on things that are unproductive, working in the business, not building the business, causing you to have burnout, causing you not to be efficient, causing you to have no work-life balance, that is on you. You controlled that, you decided to do this. On the other hand, you can decide to have work-life balance. You can decide to spend the time and commit it to your family and actually have people that you trust, people that you're account accountable for to keep you accountable while you build your business. This is all a choice that you have to make. And if you need a group of people who actually understands what you're going through, that is out there to create the same life that you wanna be able to do, then I definitely encourage you guys to check out Foodie Printer's Finest because we have two parts of a support system to help you along this process. First part is our secret foodie society. Now this is a support group on Facebook where our students get to share what they're doing, their progress, and to share with you guys the problems they're facing, ask different questions, to show the work that they have been doing, and this acts as a really great support group to share with you guys, to inspire you, to actually show you that, hey, you know what, you're not alone on this journey, and this is a very tight group of the same people who are on the same journey as you are. And the second part of this support group that we have is a bi-weekly coaching call where I jump on and I share with you guys lessons, the most up-to-date marketing strategies. I share with you guys the hot seats. So basically, if you have a business problem, I debunk and analyze everything specifically for you in real time. This is where our students get the most benefits because not only do they get to learn from our course curriculum, they also get to learn from other people's from all walks of life, people who have food trucks, people that have restaurants, people that run their restaurants and their food business online, on Instagram. We get to learn from everyone and this is by far the most valuable part of our program. So if you want people that can help you stay accountable, people that can actually be there to support you, people who understand what you're going through, this is where you need to join us because where else can you find people who are on the same journey? Where else are you gonna find people who can prop you up and push you up along the way? The quote is so true. You are the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. 
If you get to see people who are a few steps ahead of you, see how they act, see what steps they take, all you have to do, follow their footsteps. So then that way you too can make it in the world. I highly encourage you guys to check out the foodiepreneurs. Find us in the link below. The second myth is that you won't make a lot of money. Well, how much do you want to personally make per year? 60,000? 100,000? Well, I've seen some of my friends who have made way more than that in their food business. The question isn't really about whether this industry nets you good money or not. It is whether you know how to be savvy at each one of these elements. Have you chosen the right product to offer? And is there a growing demand for your food item? The pricing strategy, if you were to sell cookies and you sell them for $5, how many do you need to sell in order for you to make $10,000? That's 2,000 cookies that you need to sell. If you were smart, you would bundle it up and sell for six at $25. How many do you still need to sell now? Only 400 of them instead of the 2,000. And if you were a little bit more savvy, you would add on complimentary items, alternative items, ribbons, cards, candles, that could easily increase your average order value by five to $10. Aside from the right pricing strategy, are you aware and are you keeping tight control of your COGS, your costs of goods sold? This could very well mean better management. Better management means less spoilage. Less spoilage means that it's less cost of goods sold, meaning even more profits in your pockets, guys. Guys, having the right pricing strategy is really what dictates whether you make good money or no money at all. Now, aside from all the other costs, have you figured out your operating costs? Well, you know what? Are you purchasing fancy equipment that's not necessarily needed? All in all, guys, what I'm sharing with you is that numbers matter. The biggest killer in any of the businesses that I consult for is the lack of clarity and understanding of your business numbers because it feels like a very complex and confusing topic. By you understanding your numbers, having the clarity of that, now you know the vitality of your business. Now you know which levers to pull in order for you to be more profitable. If you were selling and you were making a lot of money, a lot of revenue specifically, but you know what? You're not retaining any of that. That means you have a bucket with a lot of leaky holes. Our goal right here is to get clarity on where the holes are to patch the holes up so we can retain more water more profits in your pockets. And I know math and numbers are scary, it's confusing, and it is hard to understand. And that's the reason why when I first started, I struggled with it a lot. And for me, I created these templates, these numbers that I need to specifically know. In this program, we only focus on numbers that matter in your food business. We focus on the numbers that would be changing the profitability of your business. So you know which levers to pull, which holes to patch. So then that way you can have more profits in your pocket. If you have any other questions and if you need the support, we have a bi-weekly coaching call where you can hop on, ask all the questions you may have. So then that way we can support you. Guys, knowing your numbers could very well mean you being on the verge of bankruptcy making two, 3% margins versus you making 20% margins, profits, real money that you can take home to take care of your family. That's the difference. So if you want to learn more and take back control, then enroll in Foodie Printer's finest in the link below. The third myth is that the market is way too saturated. There's so many people doing the same thing as I am. If you think about burgers and fries, we have McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, Carl's Jr., In-N-Out, Five Guys, so many more. If we're just thinking about fried chicken in Vancouver alone, we have dozens of fried chicken joints. Yes, there are dozens of food joints that are selling the same thing and competition is going to be furious, but that didn't stop. Shake Shack from opening. That didn't stop in and outs from competing when there's already McDonald's out there, there's already Wendy's out there. It didn't stop them from opening. It didn't stop these other fried chicken joints from spending hundreds of thousands of dollars opening up shop in Vancouver. And the reason why is because food is subjective. 
and people are out there to support brands that they can stand behind, brands that they can associate with. And that's the reason why if you were to ask a thousand people what their favorite fast food joint is, the answer is going to vary from places to places. Even though I personally prefer Shake Shack, Jason might enjoy In-N-Out. My wife would enjoy Wendy's because food is subjective. The point is guys, it doesn't really matter about the product that you sell as much as the vibe and the feeling that you give and display to your customers. Case in point, you might believe that Burger King has the best burger, whereas I might gravitate towards Shake Shack because I believe in what they do, because I wanna be associated with this brand much more than Burger King. And a lot of times that it goes beyond the taste of their food. It comes back down to how you make people feel. And the reason why I chose fast food burgers and fries to share with you is because this is the most saturated food item in the food marketplace. And that's the reason why if you have a food concept and if you're still limiting your own beliefs, thinking that it is too competitive to go out there in the marketplace, then that's why I urge you guys to think again. Now, if you're still scared of opening up your own food concept because there's four other competition around the block, then think again, guys. Go take a step backwards and think about what voice are you gonna have in this marketplace? Because once again, food taste is not enough. What is that voice? What is it that you are standing up for? What is your values? What is the story that you're trying to tell? How can you connect with your customer on a personal level? Because people buy not from their brain. People buy from their emotions and we wanna be able to tackle that. One of my students from Foodiepreneur's Finest, Michaela, she started her own donut shop called Frankie D's Donuts and she had zero background in culinary at all before she started it. Yet every time she does a drop, every time she has her donuts ready for public to buy, it sells out in a matter of minutes. Why is that the case? Because she has a great brand story that people can connect with. Her brand stands for fun and inclusion and this goes beyond selling just donuts. Now her brand resonates with people who believe in the same thing, believes inclusiveness and believes in the support of mental health. And that's the reason why people are buying her donuts, not just to buy the donuts, but to support the cause, to be associated with the brand. And that's the reason why she's so successful is because she understand the true reason why people buy. Now, if you're still unsure how to market your brand properly, how do you connect with your customers and how do you utilize social media like Instagram, then definitely check out the free masterclass training down below. This is where I share with you how do you leverage Instagram in a way that can actually promote your brand. So then that way people can actually buy from you. This is the secret that I share with Michaela from Frankie D's as well. In the link below, it is the free masterclass that you should attend right now. So there you go, friends, the three common myths that stopping aspiring food owners going out there, create something that they enjoy. These myths are all debunked. I've always said this, the reason why I created this channel is so then that way I can share with you guys my learnings, the stuff that I've learned along the whole journey. So then that way I wish that I had something like this when I first started over a decade ago. I wish I can see what other people are doing a few steps ahead of me so then that way I can learn from them so then that way I can shortcut my time to achieve the same thing that I want to achieve that's the reason why I'm sharing this with you because I know for a fact whatever I'm sharing makes a lot of impact for you that is watching right now I don't want you to make the mistakes that I made. I want you to see the mistakes that I've made, to focus on things that matter, to actually know how do you create something that is gonna be working in the food world. And that's the reason why we've created Foodie Printer's Finest. If you're thinking about creating a food business, whether it's a cloud kitchen, whether it's a farmer's market, whether it is you just wanting to sell food online at the comfort of your own home, this is for you. Foodie Printer's Finest is a program created so then that way we can leverage Instagram as a platform so then that way we can actually reach a lot of people online. We share with you the blueprints, the templates that you can utilize to do this. I understand that Instagram is still quite confusing when it comes down to it, 
But why are we using Instagram as a platform? It is because all our customers are there. So many people, pretty much everyone is using Instagram and we just need to know the nuance, the secrets of how do we use it properly in order for us to actually sell food on this platform, reaching a lot more customers. That's why we're utilizing this. In the program, I share with you not only the templates, but also have hours of video training specifically to walk you through every single process from menu design designing to actually setting the right price point to setting up your own Instagram shop. So then that way you can have the logistics, the operations, everything sorted out for you in a step-by-step -step coherent manner. Basically, it is a business in a box program created for you. And not only that, in this program, we also have the support systems to keep you accountable, to help you, to share with you, and to actually have you in a group of like-minded people, not only in the Secret Foodie Society, but also in a bi-weekly coaching call that I myself is gonna jump on to answer all your questions, to share with you what is the most up-to-date strategies. All of this is in Foodiepreneur's Finest. It is something I created that I wish I only have. Currently, we have over 100 students in there. So what are you guys waiting for? If you're serious about building a successful food business, all you have to do is to check it out in the link below. And guys, I really, really encourage you guys to check it out because this investment will pay, by, pay off itself in folds. I only wish I had this to begin with. Now. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have, all you have to do, smash that like button. I hope you had a great time and enjoyed watching this video. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.